the 20th day, almost a month now, God has been helping us and will continue to help us. Uh, yesterday, I posted, I read the 27th day reading, the 27th day, the readings for the 27th day, and I also did the 25th day because I lost the video, I posted all of that. And today, we are moving forward, we are proceeding, we are progressing. Today, we are reading Numbers chapter 19 to chapter 23 as uh, as our tradition of reading five chapters a day. We are reading from chapter 19 today to chapter 23. We are going to start there. Please, if you have your Bible with me, if you have a Bible with you, take it and read along with me. God bless you. Chapter 19. Now the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron, saying, This is the ordinance of which of the law which which the Lord has commanded, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, that they bring you a red ephah without blemish, in which there is no defect, and on which a yoke has never come. You shall give it to Eleazar the priest, that he may take it outside the camp, and it shall be slaughtered before him. And Eleazar the priest shall take some of his blood with his finger, and sprinkle some of its blood seven times directly in front of the tabernacle of meeting. Then the ephah shall be burned in its in its sight, its side, its flesh, its blood, and its offer shall be burned. And the priest shall take cedar wood and isop and scarlet and cast them into the midst of fire of the fire, burning the ephah. Then the priest shall wash his clothes, he shall bathe in water, and afterward he shall come into the camp. The priest shall be unclean until evening. And the one who burns it shall wash his clothes in water, bathe in water, and shall be unclean until evening. Then a man who is clean shall gather up the ashes of the ephah and store them up, and store them outside the camp in a clean place, and they shall be kept for the congregation of the children of Israel, for the water of purification. It is for puri it is for purifying from sin. And the one who gathers the ashes of the ephah shall wash his clothes and be unclean until evening. It shall be a statute forever to the children of Israel. And to the stranger who dwells among them. He who touches the dead body of anyone shall be unclean seven days. He shall purify himself with the water on the third day and on the seventh day. Then he will be clean. But if he does not purify himself on the third day and on the seventh day, he will not be clean. Whoever touches the body of anyone who has died and does not purify himself defiles the tabernacle of the Lord. That person shall be cut off from Israel. He shall be unclean because what of because the water of purification as not, was not sprinkled on him. His uncleanness is still on him. This is the law when a man dies in the tent. All who come into the tent and all who are in the tent shall be unclean seven days. And every open vessel which has no cover fastened on it is unclean. Whoever, whoever in the open field touches one who is slain by a sword or who has died, or a bone of a man or a grave shall be unclean seven days. And for any and for an unclean person, they shall take some of the ashes of the ifa, of the ifa, burnt for purification from sin, and running water shall be put on them in a vessel. A clean person shall take iso and dip it in the water, sprinkle it on the tent and on the tent on all the vessels on the persons who were there, or on the one who touched a bone, the slain, the dead, or a grave. The clean the clean person shall sprinkle the unclean. On the third day and on the seventh day, and on the seventh day he shall purify himself, wash his clothes, and bathe in water, and at evening he shall be clean. But the man who is unclean and does not purify himself, that person shall be cut off from their from among the assembly, because he has defiled the sanctuary of the Lord. The water of purification has not been sprinkled on him; he is unclean. It shall be a perpetual statute for them. He who sprinkles the water of purification shall wash his clothes. And he who touches the water of purification shall be unclean until evening. Whatever the unclean person touches shall be unclean, and the person who touches it shall be unclean until evening. Chapter 20 Then the children of Israel, the whole congregation, came into the wilderness of Zin in the first month, and the people stayed in Kadesh, and Miriam died there and was buried there. There was no water for the congregation, so they gathered together against Moses. And Aaron and the people contended with Moses and spoke, saying, If only we had died 
when our brethren died before the Lord? Why have you brought us? Why have you brought up the assembly of the Lord into this wilderness that we and our animals should die here? And why have you made us come? And why have you made and why have you made us come up come up out of Egypt to bring us to this evil place? It is not a place of grain or figs or vines or pomegranate, nor is there any water to drink. So Moses and Aaron went from the presence of the assembly to the door of the tabernacle of meeting, and they fell on their faces, and the glory of the Lord appeared to them. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Take the rod, you and your brother, Aaron. Gather the congregation together. Speak to the rock before their eyes, and it will yield its water. Thus you shall bring water for them out of the rock, and give drink to the congregation and their animals. So Moses took the rod from before the Lord, as he commanded him. And Moses and Aaron gathered the assembly together before the rock, and he said to them, Hear now, you rebels. Must we bring water for you out of this rock? Then Moses lifted his hand and struck the rock twice with his rod, and water came out abundantly, and the congregation and their animals drank. Then the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron, Because you did not believe me to allow me in the eyes of the children of Israel, therefore you shall not bring this assembly into the land which I have given them. This was the water of Meribah, because the children of Israel contended with the Lord, and he was allowed among them. Now Moses sent messengers from Kadesh to the king of Edom. Thus says your brother, Ishur, you know all the hardship that has befallen us. How our fathers went down to Egypt, and we dwelt in Egypt a long time, and the Egyptians afflicted us and our fathers. And when we cried out to the Lord, he heard our voice and sent the angel, and brought us up out of Egypt. Now here we are in Kadesh, a city on the edge of your border. Please let us pass through your country. We will not pass through fields of, of vineyard, nor will we drink water from yours. We will go along we will go along the king's highway. We will not turn aside to the right hand or to the left until we have passed through your territory. Then Edom said to him, You shall not pass through my land, lest I come out against you with the sword. So the children of Israel said to him, We will go by the highway, and if I or my livestock drink any of your water, then I will pay for it. Let me only pass through on foot, nothing more. Then he said, You shall not pass through. So Edom came out against them with many men and with a strong hand. Thus Edom refused to give Israel passage through his territory. So Israel turned away from him. Now the children of Israel, the old congregation, journeyed from Kadesh and came to Mount Or. And the Lord spoke to Moses and Aaron in Mount Or by the border of the land of Egypt, by the border of the land of Edom, saying, Aaron shall be gathered to his people. For I shall not enter the land which I have given to the children of Israel, because you rebelled against my word, as the word of Meribah. Take Aaron and Eleazar his son, and bring them up to Mount Or, and strip Aaron of his garments, and put them on Eleazar his son. For Aaron shall be gathered to his people, and die there. So Moses did just as the Lord commanded, and they went up to Mount Or in the sight of all the congregation. Moses stripped Aaron of his garments, and put them on, El on Eleazar his son, and Aaron died there on the top of the mountain. Then Moses and Eleazar came down from the mountain. Now when, they all, when all the congregation saw that Aaron was dead, all the house of Israel mourned for Aaron thirty days. Chapter 21 The king of Arad, the Canaanite, who dwelt in the south, heard that Israel was coming on the road to Atarim. Then he fought, Ish then he fought against Israel and took some of them prisoners. So Israel made a foul to the Lord and said, if you, you, if you will indeed deliver these people into my hand, then I will utterly destroy their cities. And the Lord listened to the voice of Israel and delivered up the Canaanites, and they utterly destroyed them and their cities. So the name of that place was called Homer. Then they journeyed from Mount Or by the way of the Red Sea to go around, to go around the land of Edom. And the uh, and the soul of the people became very discouraged on the way, and the people spoke against God and against Moses. Why have you brought us up out of Egypt to die in the wilderness? For there is no food and no water, and our soul loathes this worthless bread. So the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they beat the people, and many of the people of Israel died. Therefore the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord that he may take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed, prayed for the people. 
Then the Lord said to Moses, Make a fiery serpent and set it on a pole, and it shall be, and it shall be that everyone who is beaten, when he looks at it, shall live. So Moses made a bronze serpent and put it on the pole. And so it was if, it, if a serpent had beaten anyone, when he looked at the bronze serpent, he lived. Now the children of Israel moved on and camped in Obot. And they journeyed from Obot and camped at Ije Abarim. <laughs> I'm not going to say these things right. In the wilderness, which is east of Moab, toward the sunrise, from where they moved and camped in the valley of Zered. From there, they moved and camped on the other side of the Anon, which is in the wilderness, that extends from the border of the Amorites. For the Anon is the border of Moab, between Moab and the Amorites. Therefore it is said in the book of the words of the Lord, Waheb in Supa, in Supa, the brooks of the Anon, and the slope of the brooks that reaches to the dwelling of Ar, and lies on the border of Moab. From there they went to Ber, which is the well where the Lord said to Moses, Gather the people together, and I will give them water. Then Israel sang this song, Spring up, O well, all of you sing to it. The well the, well the leaders sang, dug by the nation's nobles, by the lawgivers with their, st with their staves. And from the wilderness they went to Matana, from Matana to Nahalio, from Nahalio to Bamos, and from Bamos in the valley that is in the country of Moab to the top of Pisgah, which took which looks down on the wasteland. The initial sent message angels to Sion, king of the Amorites, saying, Let me pass through your land. We will not turn aside into fields or vineyards. We will not drink water from wells. We will go by the king's highway until we have passed through your territory. But Sion will not allow Israel to pass through his territory. So Sion gathered all his people together and went out against Israel in the wilderness. And he came to Jazz and fought against Israel. Then Israel defeated him with the edge of the sword and took possession of his land from the Anon to the Jabbok as far as the people of Ammon. For the, pe for the border of the people of, Ma of Ammon was fortified. So Israel took all these cities and Israel dwelt in all the cities of the Amorites, in Eshbon and in all its villages. For Eshbon was the city of Sion, king of the Amorites, who had fought against the former king of Moab and are taking all his land from his hand as far as the Anon. Therefore, those who speak in Proverbs say, Come to Eshbon, let it be built, lest the city of Sion be repaired. For fire went out from Eshbon, a flame from the city of Sion is consumed out of Moab, the lords of the height of the Anon. O to you, Moab, you have perished. O people of Chemosh, he has given his sons as fugitives and his daughters into captivity to Sion, king of the Amorites, but we have shot at them. Eshbon has perished as far as Dibon, then we laid waste as far as Nopha, which reaches to Medeba. Thus Israel dwelt in the land of the Amorites. Then Moses sent to spy out Jazza, and they took its villages and drove out the Amorites who were there. And they turned and went up by the way to Bashan. So Og, king of Bashan, went out against them, he and all his people, to battle at Edre. Then the Lord said to Moses, Do not fear him, for I have delivered him into your hand with all his people and his land, and you shall do to him as you did to Sion, king of the Amorites, who dwelt at Eshbon. So, so they defeated him, his sons, and all his people, until there was no survivor left him, and they took possession of his land. Chapter 22 Then the children of Israel moved and camped in the plains of Moab on the side of the Jordan across from Jericho. Now Balak the son of Zippor saw all that Israel had done to the Amorites, and Moab was exceedingly afraid of the people because they were many, and Moab was sick with dread because of the children of Israel. So Moab said to the elders of Midian, Now this company will lick up everything around us as an ox licks up the grass of the field. And Balak, the son of Zippor, was king of the Moabites at that time. Then he sent messengers to Balaam, the son of Bor, at Petor, which is near 
the river in the land of the sons of his people to call him saying look a people has come from egypt see they cover the face of the earth and are settling next to me therefore please come at once cause these people for me for they are too mighty for me perhaps i should be able to defeat them and drive them out of the land for i know that he whom you bless is blessed and he whom you cause is cursed so the elders of moab and the elders of Midian departed with the diviner's fee in their hand and they came to Balaam and spoke to him the words of Balak. And he said to him, Lord, here tonight, and I will bring back words to you, as the Lord speak to me. So the prince of Moab stayed with Balaam. Then God came to Balaam and said, Who are these men with you? So Balaam said to the Lord, Balak, the son of Zippor, king of Moab, has sent to me, saying, Look, a people has come out of Egypt, and they covered the face of the earth. Come now, cause them for me. Perhaps I shall be able to overpower them and drive them out. And God said to Balaam, You shall not go with them. You shall not curse the people, for they are blessed. So Balaam rose in the morning and said to the prince of Balak, Go back to your land, for the Lord has refused to give me permission to go with you. And the princes of Moab rose and went to Balak and said, Balaam refuses to come with us. Then Balak again sent princes more numerous and more honorable than they, and they came to Balaam and said to him, Thus says Balak, the son of Zippor, Please let nothing hinder you from coming to me, for I will certainly honor you greatly, and I will do whatever you say to me. Therefore, please come, curse these people for me. Then Balaam answered and said to the servants of Balak, Though Balak were to give me his house full of silver and gold, I could not go by beyond the word of the Lord to do less or more. Now, therefore, please you also stay here tonight, that I may know what more the Lord will say to me. And God came to Balaam at night and said to him, If the men come to call you, rise and go with them. But only the word which I speak to you, that you shall do. So Balaam rose in the morning, saddled his donkey, and went with the princes of Moab. Then God's anger was aroused because he went. And the angel of the Lord took his stand in the way as an adversary against him. And he was riding on his donkey, and his two servants were with him. Now the donkey saw an angel of the Lord standing in the way with his drawn sword in his hand. And the donkey turned aside out of the way and went into the field. So Balaam struck the donkey to turn her back on the road. Then the angel of the Lord stood in a narrow path between the vineyards with a wall on this side and a wall on that side. And when the donkey saw the angel of the Lord, she pushed herself against the wall and crushed Balaam's foot against the wall. So he struck her again. Then the angel of the Lord went further and stood in a narrow place where there was no way to turn. He, where there was no way to turn either to the right or to the left. And when the donkey saw the angel of the Lord, she lay down under Balaam. So Balaam's anger, <laughs> so Balaam's anger was aroused, and he struck the donkey with his staff. Then the Lord opened the mouth of the donkey, and she said to Balaam, What have I done to you that you have struck me these three times? And Balaam said to the donkey, Because you have abused me, I wish there would be a sword in my hand, for now I would kill you. So the donkey said to Balaam, Am I not your donkey on which you have ridden ever since I became yours to this day? Was I ever disposed to do this to you? And he said, No. Then the Lord opened Balaam's eyes, and he saw the angel of the Lord standing in the way with his drawn sword in his hand, and he bowed his head and fell flat on his face. And the angel of the Lord said to him, Why have you struck your donkey these three times? Behold, I have come out to stand against you, because your way is perverse between me, before me. The donkey saw me and turned aside from me. And turned aside from me these three times. Surely I would also have killed you by now and let her live. And Balaam said to the angel of the Lord, I have sinned, for I did not know you stood in the way against me. Now therefore, if it, if it displeases you, I will turn back. Then the angel of the Lord said to Balaam, Go with the men, but only the word that I speak to you, that you shall speak. So Balaam went with the princes of Balak. Now when Balak heard that Balaam was coming, he went out to meet him at the city of Moab, which is on the border of the at the Anon, the boundary of the territory. Then Balak said to Balaam, Did I and did I not earnestly send to you, calling for you? Why did you not come to me? Am I not able to honor you? And Balaam said to Balak, Look, I have come to you. Now, have I any power at all to say anything? 
the word that God put in my mouth, that I must speak. So Balaam went with Balak, and they came to Kijat Uzot. Then Balaam offered oxen and sheep, and he sent some to Balaam and to the princes who were with him. So it was the next day that Balak took Balaam and brought him up to the high places of Baal, that from there he might observe the extent of the people. Chapter 23, the last chapter. Then Balaam said to Balak, Build seven altars for me here, and prepare for me in here seven bulls and seven rams. And Balak did just as Balaam had spoken. And Balak and Balaam offered a bull and a ram on each altar. Then Balaam said to Balak, Stand by your burnt offering, and I will go. Perhaps the Lord will come to meet me, and whatever he shows me, I will tell you. And whatever. So he went to a desolate height, and God met Balaam, and he said to him, I have prepared the seven altars I have offered on each altar, a bull and a ram. Then the Lord put a word in Balaam's mouth and said, Return to Balak, and thus you shall speak. So he returned to him, and there he was, and there he was standing by his burnt offering, and he and all he and all the princes of Moab. And he took up his oracle and said, Balak, the king of Moab, has brought me from Aram, from the mountains of the east. Come, cause Jacob for me, and come, denounce Israel. How shall I cause whom God has not caused? And how shall I denounce whom the Lord has not denounced? For from the top of the rocks I see him, and from the hills I behold him. There a people dwelling alone, not reckoning itself among the nations, or not reckoning itself among the nations. Who can count the dust of Jacob, or number one fourth of Israel? Let me die the death of the righteous, and let my end be like this. Then Balak said to Balaam, What have you done to me? I took you to curse my enemy, and look, you have blessed them bountifully. So he answered and said, Must I not take it to speak what the Lord has put in my mouth? Then Balak said to him, Please come with me to another place from which you may see them. You shall see only the outer part of them, and shall not see them all. Cause them from me from there. So he brought him to the field of Zoophim, to the top of Pisgah, and built seven altars, and offered a bull and a ram on each altar. And he said to Balak, Stand there by your burnt offering, while I meet the Lord over there. Then the Lord met Balak, Balaam, and put a word in his mouth, and said, Go back to Balak, and thus you shall speak. So he came to him, and there he was, standing by his burnt offering, and the princes of Moab were with him. And Balak said to him, What has the Lord spoken? Then he took up his oracle and said, Rise up, Balak, and hear. Listen to me, son of Zippor. God is not a man that he should lie, nor a son of man that he should repent. As he said, as he said, and will he not do? Or as he spoken, and will he not make it good? Behold, I have received the command to bless. He has blessed, I cannot reverse it. He has not observed iniquity in Jacob, nor has he seen wickedness in Israel. The Lord is God, is with him, and the shout of the king is among them. God brings them out of Egypt. He has strength like a white ox. For there is no sorcery against Jacob, nor any, divin or any divination against Israel. It now must be said of Jacob and of Israel, Oh, what God has done! Look, look, a people, a people rises like a lioness and lifts itself up like a lion. It shall not lie down until it devours the prey and drinks the blood of the slain. Then Balak said to Balaam, Neither curse them at all, nor bless them at all. So Balaam answered and said to Balak, Did I not tell you, saying, All that the Lord speaks, that I must do. Then Balak said to Balaam, Please come, I will take you to another place. Perhaps it will please God that you may cause them for me from there. So Balaam took Balak. To the top of Pearl that overlooks the wasteland. Then Balaam said to Balak, Build for me here seven waters, and prepare for me here seven bulls and seven rams. And Balak did as Balaam had said, and offered a bull and a ram on every altar. This man, Balak, is really bent on causing the people of Israel and conquering them. 
because he's really worried worried that they're going to take over his land that is the end of the 20th day of the day thank you for staying till the end god bless you and yeah please if you have not already subscribe and like this video turn on the notification to be notified when i post another video and please share this video with anyone that you know that needs it we will keep reading we will not stop and yeah it's almost one month now since we started god has been with us and we'll continue we don't lose hope <laughs> we will continue and we will in the name of jesus thank you very much for watching and i'll see you in the next video bye